This is NBC News for Universal Kids. I'm Savannah Sellers, and here's your Week in Review. <music> Making videos to save shelter dogs. Meet Roman and his furry friends. He and his mom, Jen, started Project Freedom Ride to help dogs from animal shelters find homes. After picking up the dogs at the shelter and bringing them home, Jen makes videos of Roman playing with the dogs and posts them online. This way, people interested in adopting can get to know each dog and see how it gets along with children. And Roman absolutely loves being on camera with his buddies. She's just my little snuggle bug. Dogs can end up in animal shelters when they are lost or given up by their owners. Sometimes the shelters run out of space for them, so they need people to adopt them. Roman and Jen started by picking up 31 dogs and kept all of them at their house until they could be adopted by a new family. Then we just kept going. But thanks to the videos and their dedication, Roman and Jen have helped 1,000 dogs find homes. Those are my shoes! So, how can you help dogs in animal shelters near you? Volunteer to feed or even read books to them. Or you can donate supplies like towels, pet food, and toys. Kids sleeping late on school days. That can't be real. But for high schoolers in Seattle, Washington, it's a dream come true. Two years ago, the school start time changed from 7.50 in the morning to 8.45. It's fantastic. Why the change? Sleep experts thought that students would do better in school if they didn't have to wake up quite as early. I just crave sleep sometimes. <laughs> For most teens, their bodies tell them to go to sleep later. And if they stay up too late, they have trouble getting up for school the next morning. So the Seattle School District participated in an experiment. Researchers followed the kids' activity and sleep patterns after the school changed the start time. And I really like that you can see the pattern of their school day. And guess what they found? Students slept about 34 extra minutes per night. Their grades went up, and kids missed fewer days of school. It is so much more fun to teach kids who are more awake and more ready to talk about what they're learning. Not every school can change their start time, but maybe one day yours will. And now, have you seen this? Have you ever seen a stingray? How about thousands of them at once? Every year, cow nose stingrays migrate or travel between Florida and Mexico. Cow nose rays travel in huge groups called schools. They travel together to keep each other safe from bigger animals. Watch as their fins glide through the ocean. They look more like wings. Kids solving real world problems. Meet Katanjali Rao. I'm a very curious person and I like to learn about everything that I can see and know about everything around me. At just 13 years old, she's already invented a water testing kit to help people who don't have clean water. In 2014, all tap water in Flint, Michigan got polluted with lead, a dangerous metal that you shouldn't drink or even be around. Thousands of people didn't have any clean water for almost four years. Lead doesn't change the taste, smell, or look of water, so the only way you can find it is with a scientific test. Gitanjali thought it was unfair that some kids didn't know if their water was safe to drink. So she invented a water testing kit that helps people easily and cheaply check water to see if it has dangerous amounts of lead or if it's safe. She won the America's Top Young Scientist Award for her invention and got money to continue working on it. She also gave a really big speech called a TED Talk to a crowd of hundreds of people. I just couldn't accept the fact that there was a city in our country where thousands of children my age were exposed to a poison. Today, other cities in the United States and around the world still have lead in their water. Now, Gitanjali wants to make her kit available everywhere so all people can make sure they have safe drinking water. Chocolate. The sweet treat is everywhere, especially this week. Every year, shoppers spend $1.7 billion on chocolate for Valentine's Day. But have you ever wondered what makes chocolate so delicious and hard to say no to? All that yum happens thanks to chemistry and the different chemicals in chocolate. First, there's caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant, which means it wakes the brain up. It's also in coffee and tea, which is why adults usually drink them in the morning. And then there's tryptophan. It's a powerful chemical that goes directly to the area of the brain that controls joy. 
Tryptophan causes the brain to release another chemical called serotonin, which makes the body feel, well, happy. These two chemicals working together make the brain feel both awake and happy. But what about the smooth and creamy feel that chocolate has? Chocolate's melting point, or the temperature that changes it from a solid piece of chocolate into liquid chocolate, is the same temperature as your mouth. So when you eat a piece of chocolate, it quickly begins to melt and covers the tongue. And that chocolatey liquid makes the taste buds on the tongue excited, just like the brain is. If only broccoli was full of caffeine and tryptophan and melted in your mouth like chocolate. And now, have you seen this? A five-year-old from Russia scores a push-up world record. He did 3,200 push-ups in only two hours and 30 minutes. I think he deserves some of that chocolate after all of that exercise. The government shut down. The United States government has shut down 21 times since 1976. So how does that happen? Well, the government collects money from citizens and businesses, called taxes. This money is used to pay for all the things government does, like delivering mail, running schools, fixing roads, and protecting the country. The same way your family decides how to spend money on food, a trip to an amusement park, or a new winter coat, the government has to decide how to spend money. It's called a budget. A government shutdown happens when Congress, the Senate, and the House of Representatives, and the President can't agree on how to spend this money. So they don't approve a budget. Without budget money, lots of different parts of government stop working, like national parks and museums and NASA. Not all programs stop, though, because it would be dangerous to Americans if they did like the National Weather Service and Food Safety Inspection. A government shutdown affects everyone, especially the government workers who aren't getting paid and people who need the government to help them with food or childcare. I wasn't behind on my bills until the shutdown. Planning how to spend money is a big responsibility for the President and Congress. And the only way it works is if they all work together. And now, have you seen this? Check out this huge bear getting fed with a fork. That's some winter picnic. That's your look at this week's NBC News for Universal Kids. Now go join the conversation.